Welcome everybody as the American Space Museum brings to you Stay Curious. I'm Mark Marquette and today I'm here with Mike Killian. Hey Mike. Hey Mark. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Well Mike is a photographer and we're, you're going to be amazed at some jaw-dropping photography, not just space photography, but he's an aviation freelancer and I've known Mike for a little bit since I've been on the Space Coast. He's one of the shutter bugs out there that regularly photograph a lot of launches. So glad to have you here finally, Mike, and thanks for being a Stay Curious washer. Thank you so much, Mark. How have you been? How'd you enjoy I'm, the little museum today tour? Oh, I love coming to this museum. I recommend any of you watching, check this place out. If you're ever on the Space Coast to watch a launch, there's a lot of history here. It'll blow your mind. A lot of space-flown artifacts. It's just, I always love coming here. One of a kind stuff. Yeah. Mike uh, is the, the former managing editor of americaspace.com. We've yep. got his thing down there wrong, but he's a freelancer for them and all kinds of other publications. A guy who really knows how to make a buck with his camera, uh, and it's not as easy as you all think so out there. It's, it's, uh, uh, but behind you here, Mike, we've got one on our green screen, one of your really masterpieces. Thank you. A beautiful lightning shot that's the vab right over my cup yeah. of rocket fuel here i've been trying to get a shot like that for years uh and never hit it hit it just exactly right but uh, uh so we're going to talk about his photography career we're going to talk about uh, you're going to see a lot of beautiful pictures we're going to roll through them real quick because i wanted to uh, let you all become familiar with mike's work but first of all where'd you grow up San Francisco Bay Area, California, really? just south of the city on the peninsula. Yeah. Okay. And how'd you get interested in photography? Have you been in it all your life, like me and a lot of other shutter bugs? Or? You know, not until after I graduated high school, but I grew up still with that creative bug. I loved drawing and sketches, and I loved anything that flew, planes. I saw a space shuttle on TV for the first time. It blew my mind that people actually did that. Uh -huh. Then I learned mm -hmm. about Apollo, and we went to the moon, and I just didn't get into photography until I was much older. Writing was did always Did you have my... any formal training? Did you go to any no. photography institute? You're, you're just like me, learned by the yeah. School of Hard Knocks, it sounds like. Huh? Yeah, I decided one day to start learning and picked up a film camera and started shooting storms in the neighborhood or cars driving by, just learning how an aperture works and just the inner workings of a camera. And once you understand how the camera works, you can pretty much take it from there. And, and being a self-taught person myself that has made, you know, paid a lot of bills with photography, it's kind of amazing that it is a, a, a knack that, that uh, just not the creativity involved, but the timing yeah. uh, of when you're shooting your images. And Mike is an awesome aviation photographer. You're going to see uh, some airplane pictures like you've never seen before. A lot of them with him uh, w being put in the position to do some of these things. So, uh, uh, but Mike, what kind of equipment did, did uh, remember your first camera and what kind do you shoot now? It was a Canon Rebel of some kind. Yeah, uh, Canon maybe Rebel. an XS or something. Yeah, okay. Um, my dad was actually a photographer for Kodak and San Francisco Chronicle, which is the main newspaper out there, it still is. Oh, okay. But I never caught the bug myself until I was much older, and really it was the space program that inspired me to start pursuing photography professionally as a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. Would that make your dad happy? Yeah, uh, he passed away some time ago, but at the time when I started covering the space shuttle program, he was alive and uh, he yeah. seemed to be pretty proud. Yeah. Yeah. He well, was into wildlife and stuff, and so am I, but I never made a profession out of nature and wildlife. That was his thing. Well, you've been, uh, you've been involved with this. Uh, talk, talk about uh, America Space that we have there. Mm -hmm. the, the, he's the uh, former managing editor uh, on there. It, that's a kind of a uh, very uh, in-depth uh, uh, news of the day and the history of the day Pretty in much. space there. Yeah, it's um, mm -hmm. weekly space history articles, human spaceflight missions with Apollo and the space shuttle era. Just uh, looking back on those missions, you know, uh, we might be a week anniversary of a certain mission that mm -hmm. happened and we'll revisit it. And we cover the space news that's happening, like the recent rollout of the SLS Artemis One rocket, 
things that are going on on the space station. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a launch schedule, so when people are visiting Space Coast, they can go there and know if there's a launch that's happening soon that they might be able to see. Just a lot of space news, as much as we can keep up with, with a small staff anyway. Well, we appreciate having you here, Mike Killian. He's an yep. awesome freelance photographer. When uh, uh, Marty uh, is my co-producer and working our board here with our Streamlabs uh, situation, We're bringing you these beautiful pictures here in a minute. And um, I know Marty's he uh, doesn't, I mean, uh, we've got, I've had a few photographers on the show and we don't want to burn you out on photographers, but photographers are the storytellers of, of our space program. And you're going to see his aviation photos that tell specific stories too. So uh, I'd love, we, we've had uh, four or five photographers on. Yeah. I know some of our photography brethren are watching you, your buddies, uh, Mark Usiak and Tom. UCAC out there. Good friends. Uh, and uh, you make a lot of good friends in this, this strange profession yeah. because everybody gathers together and then hurries up to get at one place and then they wait and then they wait. There's a lot of that. Wait. <laughs> yeah, well, covering history together, those experiences really mean something. You look back on it and really can't believe you were there sometimes. Yeah, yeah. In, in, indeed. Well, let's look at some of your pictures okay. here. And by the way, we do want to mention the Hyatt Place Hotel that we are going to have our golden anniversary of the space shuttle as uh, yep. we're coming to you from our Hyatt Place studios. Didn't put their logo in there because we Mark gave me a lot of pictures and, and we've, we used up all of our memory with his stuff there. But we're starting out with cool shot, photographer looking at the iconic building here on our space coast, the vi uh, vehicle assembly building. Yeah. Yeah, my Jeep is pretty much my office. As a photojournalist, you work a lot in the field. You want to get edits done right away. Um, want to get whatever article you might be assigned done right away. That's my office. There you go. Yeah. I can tell that's a Canon lens because it's yep. white. You see Canon lenses are very awesome lenses, and you see a lot of them on the sideline in sports and uh, uh, the, the, the noted uh, blonde or white uh, yeah. pattern that they have there. Well, speak of a couple devils there, there is Mark Usiak left and Carlton Bailey. Hi, Carlton. Hey, Carlton. There, and yourself there. Uh, speak of how the the fellowship, you know, is, is uh, well, just, you know, yeah. it's a cool so, brotherhood and sisterhood of, of people out there. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there, and now you have a new era of journalists and photographers and writers, but Mark and Carlton have been around for a very long time. And you know, there's that saying in space, you're on the shoulder of giants, there people that came from before you. Uh -huh. So, you know, Mark in that picture there, he's been covering since the Apollo moon program. And that was the first day that I actually got to meet him. Wow, that's, that's neat. That's Space Shuttle Discovery STS-133. And we've mm -hmm. been friends ever since. He's been very supportive of my work and I'm really appreciative of people like him. Well, good. We're, yeah. There's uh, you. Who, no. who are you with there? That, was that is uh, Seth Green, who was Doctor Evil's son in the Austin Powers movies. Okay. All and right. That was a space shuttle mission, STS-134. NASA invited him out to get the message out to the public and to his lots of fans that he has. Celebrities are part of our. Uh, we met lots of celebrities program. in the day. And you're just looking at a your your film find. We're not a film photographer anymore. No. When you're looking at the back of your camera, so that seeing how good you did. That is an Air Force Pave Hawk that I'm getting ready to fly. I'm doing a final check on my camera, and we flew for the first SpaceX Dragon to go to the space station. The Air Force provides the security on the range so that keep the mariners and the boats and the aircraft out of the way, so the rockets can launch. And that was us getting ready to fly. And okay. I'm the only journalist in the 50 years of the space program who has actually flown with the Air Force on those missions. Now that's the kind of stuff I love about photographers. You get your way into somewhere, do yeah. a good job, and then they, they you're their man. You and, never uh, know what doors will open. You just have to pursue your path and what you enjoy and the doors opening will come along. Good, yeah. good advice to you freelancers out there. It's yeah. tough, there's obviously a lot of competition us old shutter bugs make a joke that uh, uh, some of them don't know the difference between an f-stop and a bus stop but uh, 
uh, you know, uh, sometimes that doesn't matter with today's automatic cameras. And, sure. And uh, there are a lot of, lot of, lot of ways to do it out there. There we got to leave Tom in there with you, Tom yep. Usiak. Hi, Tom. Yep. Marty, you can give me uh, the list of anyone watching our Stay Curious program today anytime you want. We'll yeah. inject some of our fans in there. And Tom, Tom's of course. going to do a talk April 4th with us. Great. This is going to be very interesting, something he came up with to talk about how all of the photos are disseminated uh, from uh, the NASA f shooters and freelancers and how they go through the labs there at NASA and stuff like that. So sure. That'd, that'd be that'd great. That'd be a good show. Yeah. But looks like a lot of a lot of uh, poop photographers there. What? There's a lot of, like you said, <laughs> waiting, and it can be hours and hours, especially when a rocket delays and delays and delays. It's hot. It's a lot of bugs. So we do a lot of that out there from time to time. A lot take, of bugs. Lay on the ground and take a nap and use your backpack as a pillow. There you yeah. go. Well, we're going to look at some of your pretty pictures, so to speak. Tell us what this one is. and It's a, uh, a multiple image. Yes, yeah, so okay. that is an Atlas V rocket launch, ULA, launching the Van Allen radiation probes for NASA. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was called RBSP. But um, the rocket launch itself is just one exposure, but all the star trails in the background are about an hour and a half worth of exposures. So there's probably 200 photos layered into one single image to make that. Now, that's something... Photographers learn a lot about manipulating their images on a computer, yeah. and that's something I've not gone into that arena too much. But uh, uh, again, it takes a lot of talent to do this. You had this in your mind, sure, that, that you wanted to do this. This is yeah. not just something you made up on the spot. Not at all. Um, basically, the, shark, the excuse me, the stars trailing in that photo are showing you the rotation of the Earth. Mm -hmm with the rocket launching. So yeah, that is two hours of time, Earth rotation shown in one photo, yeah. Some awesome photography that you've been hired to do for special events. And is that you Yeah. out the window of the helicopter? Marty, we might have to have your, your little circle thing there. That is you hanging out of a, what, what kind of helicopter? So that is another Payfock helicopter. It's locally based here in Central Florida, the 920th Rescue Wing, uh -huh. who are also the guardian angel airmen for the astronauts when they would fly on the space shuttle. Wow. You're um, out the door. Yeah, so I was is flying. Is that a fueling probe, I'm going to guess? Is yeah, that's on, is? that's on the airplane that took the picture. Shout out to my friend Jeff Siebert. He's also a photojournalist. Uh -huh. He captured that photo. He's yeah. Watching, by the way. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Jeff Siebert. Thanks for watching. Great photo, buddy. Wow. I mean, that's it's just... rare we get photos of ourselves at work. So when he sent me that, it, it, I thought it was pretty cool. There's a photo of you wishing you were at work in a commander of a space shuttle. What that is, is that? That uh, is space shuttle Endeavor. Not a simulator. That is the real thing. OB-105. That, that was the last time that NASA powered up the orbiter in the processing facility. They still had to drain some of the hypergolic fuels and toxic stuff that was in there before sending it to the museum. Wow. So that was the last time it was powered up. And being a local photojournalist, it was very short notice. So they can't get the national news media here that quickly. So they called me and said, you have 45 minutes on board if you can get here in you know a couple hours time so how could i say no yeah. and that was nice of them just drop everything you're doing and i was at a mcdonald's when they called me yeah and i dropped everything and headed to the space center and the next thing i know i'm on board a powered up space shuttle feeling like i'm six years old you know good to be single when you're doing that or an <laughs> yeah. understanding spouse because uh we both know that's that's always been an issue with uh uh, where are you going? Well, I just, just got a call. The yeah. plane crashed on the airport. Right There's a lot there. of I travel. I travel pretty much all year and live on the road, so it gets hard. There's a picture of you at the press site. A typical yep. shuttle uh, smoky SRB launch there. Space shuttle STS-133 Discovery. Okay, which you said was your first uh, time to do that. Now we got a couple aviation photos here. That is the shuttle on the 747. Yeah, that again is um, Endeavor. 
Okay. On its <clears throat> final day at the Kennedy Space Center, it was leaving to go to California to the California oh, that's kind of Science going off Museum. in the sunset right there. It was sunrise, actually. Okay. Yeah, and it was just a beautiful <clears throat> morning, and I just loved how the colors popped. You can see the wingtip vortices coming off the 747. That's the it smoke, was just a spectacular vort sight to of see the that. Atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Again, a chase plane. Yep, the T-38. I can't remember who was on board, but it had a NASA astronaut and a photographer. Now, is that you? That is, is that me. In the back, and it looks like the ground is at the top. Yep. So you must be upside down. <clears throat> yes. So that is with Brightling Jet Team. I was. Um, they hired me to be their photographer on their North American tour. I think it was 2016. We're over the Rocky Mountains in that photo. Hmm. But it, it was amazing. It was just four months traveling all around America and Canada doing the aerial photos for them for their marketing and stuff mm -hmm. and I bet there's a stack of paperwork to sign your life away that you're going to be doing that. always always yeah. uh, no one wants to be sued you know no so. one wants to be sued is that during eclipse that is a total solar eclipse in 2017. Which you were in the air for the great American <laughs> eclipse? I was, and I plan to be in the air for the next one, too. Sweet. Yeah. So we flew right through it. Oh, that's over the Pacific Ocean. We were actually, as who's, far as who's I... Who's we? Who were you with? Uh, my right? pilot, and I believe we were the first ones, human beings, to actually see that eclipse. It started on the west, west coast and yeah. worked its way across the... We, wow. were, we were way out in the ocean. There's no one else there. Right. And we were flying with Navy um, fighter jets out of Washington. They came to meet us uh -huh. in it and do some photography to promote the Navy. Like they say, every picture has a thousand tales about it. Now, yeah. that's an awesome selfie. Thank you. If that's you. That is me. And, yeah. Uh, Aurora. Where, where were you at to capture that Aurora? That's a really nice... It's a place called Torrance Barrens Dark Sky Preserve. So a lot of us astrophotographers like yourself, mm -hmm. it's north of Toronto, about three hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was just one of those lucky nights where, uh, what was it, the Space Weather Prediction yeah. Center uh -huh. pretty much said there's going to be a storm, and it was crystal clear. So I went for it. Geomagnetic storm. Wow. Yeah. Purple among the green. The green's more common. But it was an unforgettable really, night. Uh, an amazing night there. Why not? interject yourself in the photography there yeah after all uh, uh, I always like a human being in photographies to give it that human because you know animals don't buy photos humans do yeah so uh, but that, that's very very I can see that you got a strobe with you that you've triggered on this long exposure there to put the light on your feet there that's that was that was the flashlight on my cell phone oh really <laughs> yeah. oh wow wow uh, what are we looking at here, Mike Killian? Okay, so that is what's that's the plumbing of the space shuttle, basically. Um, oh. In the orbiter processing facility, they took the engines out so they could reuse them on the rocket that's, that's out there right now. That's what's behind the three SSME yeah. engines. So if you took the main there. engines off the space shuttle, that's what the plumbing looks like, and everything's color coded. They have ladders. It's so much bigger than it looks in a photo, but I figured. That's not rare something the public photo. sees. No, no, you know? rare, rare photo. There you yeah. are inside there. Uh, huh. That's a cool shot of an S of the of seconds. That's a Falcon 9, a SpaceX. Oh, that is. Yeah. Oh, that's the one that uh, they had to dump in the ocean there. Yeah, they tried to land it. As you know, they're very successful at it. This was much earlier in their development. And um, it missed the landing pad, so the onboard avionics actually did their job and steered the rocket away from land. And it actually did a soft landing in the ocean. Yeah. And then just tipped over and stayed in peace, as you can see. And as soon as that happened, I said, I got to get on a helicopter and be the first one out there to get the aerial photos of the operations to recover it. So that's what that is. And you got to know someone's got a helicopter to just yep. jump you out there. Yeah. That's nice to know. There's the, there's the triple barrel Delta rocket, is it? The Delta IV Heavy, correct. Of United Launch Alliance. Yep. That's a remote camera, of course, that you yes. set up up there. How Very many remote close. cameras do you usually put on a... <clears throat> Myself, um, two, maybe three. Mm -hmm. I set three for that particular launch. There's a lot of guys out there that will set five, six, maybe even more. The more angles you can get, the better, and the more um, there's insurance there's policy there's you have in case one camera doesn't work. Right. There's a lot of reasons your cameras won't work. Wildlife, weather... Electronics. Yeah, just, things just uh, happen. There's another beautiful launch there. Another Delta IV, much smaller. 
This is an unusual high shot. I don't know if you're in a plane uh, uh, or dangling yeah. by your ankles somewhere. Or so that's it's, it's actually... not the gantry, is it? That, that's no. That's too high for the gantry. That is the night that SpaceX launched their first Dragon capsule to the space station to prove to NASA they could actually do it safely. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And that is from an Air Force Pavehawk. Earlier when I was holding the camera and it's all red behind me in the picture. Right, yes. That is one of the photos I captured on oh, that mission. Okay. We literally just hovered right next to the rocket because the Air Force owns the range. The Air Force owns that launch complex even. Uh -huh. So the Air Force guys can kind of do what they want. Wow. So we just hovered over the rocket for a few minutes and then we mm -hmm. went out to get the boats out of the way. Now back in the film days, Mike, that'd be quite a challenge because yeah. it's dark, but you can crank up because of the sensitivity of the film. Correct. You're lucky to have, well, Ektar or 1000 ISO is uh, almost yeah. unheard of, but because of these digital cameras, you're, you've got that cranked up to some incredible yeah. four or 5,000 ISO or more. Yeah. And the again, technology now oh, gorgeous makes it so photograph. much easier. What a, what a beautiful image there, all the colors Thank you. and, and the, the geometry going on there. I really like that. So that is from the same helicopter on the same mission, but that's what they see. That's through night vision goggles. Oh, okay. So that's the launch complex. We're offshore. But that's what it looks like through night vision goggles, which I thought was pretty cool. Huh. Now a few more airplanes here. That is not a, that is a juxtaposition and not a Photoshop? Not at all. Um, <clears throat> that is what's called a Navy legacy formation. That's a Corsair leading the way. Gotcha. Which was a World War II plane and it served another, it served for many years after that. Uh -huh. That's a World War II Navy plane. Um, it's owned in Georgia. And flying with him is an F-18 Hornet, which is a modern-day Navy fighter. So those are two fighters with probably 60, 70 years between them. Gotcha. And that's one of the things that I actually do outside of covering space flight is I work with a lot of aviation museums and air shows and pilots around the country, and I do a lot of work with the military and bring the history and the present together to keep that heritage alive and educate people and inspire people in motivate them to support these museums like yourself. Literally, you have a couple of seconds that that happened, yeah. right? Because the jet's got to be going faster than the, the prop plane. Yeah, that jet is uh, flying about as slow as he can while the Corsair in the front is flying as fast as he can, now, actually. Now, you're in a different plane taking this, of course. Yeah. Are you in communication with the two pilots in the or someone in communication with them? Yes. Uh, I'm saying, okay, we've got our photographer ready to go yeah. and now stage the... But this this has to be planned ahead of time, Very right? much so. It can be... On the uh, ground, you've got to have a, a, a meeting to, to yeah. plan all this with, with three pilots here. The one you're, you're playing and those two guys, am I right? Yeah. Wow, we, think about that, folks. We always have a briefing on the ground. Um, when you're up there going those kind of speeds that close things can go wrong very fast so we brief and plan everything everything is known ahead of time cool. i communicate to my pilot and he relays that to whoever we're doing the photography with it's all safe we all come back there's a jet heading right into your lens there yeah that's a modern day stealth fighter that's the most modern fighter jet that we have in our arsenal it's the f-35 that's 35 wow in your face of course, we love the old ones, how they painted them up. <clears throat> yeah, that's a pretty iconic World War II fighter, a P-40. My friend Tom Richard owns it. It's called American Dream. That's actually me in the back seat. My okay. My friend Sean Jackway captured that photo. Thank you, Sean. All right. Canopy, that's got to be cool. To that's be just one of those of. examples of being a photographer and photojournalist, the places that it can take you. I never imagined I'd be flying in that kind of a plane. Here's another upside-down shot. Yeah, we're just doing loops together, wingtip to wingtip, to <laughs> capture more dynamic, exciting people or images for people, to get them interested. You obviously can handle it. Don't get airsick and love the thing. No, but, I love it. Uh, uh, that, that's cool. So you, you get must, used to it just like anything else, you too. You must be a hellion out at the rides at Disney and stuff. You like all those thrill rides, too? Sure. Yeah, sure? <laughs> yeah, sure. As long as I can have my camera with me as I'm yeah. doing a loop-de-loop -loop out there at the volcano. Yeah. The pilots usually take it easy on me because when you hit G's, the camera can get very heavy, you know, so. Well, here's the beautiful picture we use in the background. Marty, yeah, question and give me some of the people watching our show today. What question do we have? Mark Usiak, Mike, what's your favorite air-to-air -air lens? 
Favorite air to air lens. Hey, All Mark. Right for Mike there. Hi, Mark. Uh, that's an easy one. 24 to 105 millimeter, which is. Uh, 24 mid- to 105. Yeah. Surprise it's, you with It's a perfect mid range because we're very close. We're never too far away. So that, that range of lens is my workhorse in the air. I almost use that exclusively, and it's never let me down. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, good, good. Uh, uh, yeah, you get photographers are like that. They get a sweet lens, mm-hmm. and and uh, even some of the older lenses. I've got a, a, a off-brand 105 lens that's yeah. beautiful for portrait photography in the studio that I've shot thousands of portraits on. Sure. I think it's a Vivitar, but it just, the, the, it just looks great. Yeah. You know, the lenses are more important <clears throat> than the cameras as far as Absolutely. I'm concerned. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, hi to Mark Usiak out there. Ophelia's watching from Ophelia Sautrel. She's cool. in Normandy, France. Hi, Ophelia. And you're going to see a picture, I believe, of Normandy yeah. in one of your racks up here. Ophelia. I have been to we'll France. I love France. Uh, Dave Stangy. Thank you, Dave, for watching. Brad McKinnon. Yep. Uh, you know Brad? I do. McKinnon. We haven't met yet, but we know each other online. Yeah. Cynthia Rossi. Jeff Sieber. Hey, Jeff. Cynthia. And uh, Beverly Rother, we know Beverly. Beverly. She's uh, now a new docent out at Cape Canaveral Space Force. Yeah. Beverly, thank you for uh, staying curious with us. Uh, and Tom Usiak and Carlton Bailey. Hey, Tom. Two shutter bugs that are. I think Carlton's loading his cameras up to throw them out in the ocean after seeing your. No, he's not. Your stuff. Well, that's where I should put mine after seeing your work no. in there. You always. Uh, uh, Let's let's go here to the next. Oh, that picture we're gonna go to. There's a cool shot. Yeah, it's over Normandy. That is over Normandy. Correct. There, Ophelia. There's Normandy <clears throat> for you. That's me um, down there with. Oh, Air that F- is you. Yeah. Oh my God. One of the Air Force guys shot that and sent it to me. I thought it was pretty cool. That was just. Um, Tell us what the event was. As every year, the Air Force does flyovers all week long, the week of D-Day, and so that's seventh. Yeah, that week every year the Air Force does flyovers every day just to... June 6th could be D-Day. Is it June 6th or 7th, Marty? 6th, I believe. You can correct me, Marty. D-Day, is it June 6th or 7th? 6th. Yeah. All right, I said 7th, so... But we do it every year, and so I was there for the 74th and the 75th anniversaries, just covering the Air Force tributes that they do, just flying all week long. Paying tribute to How neat was that? our grandparents who fought for freedom. That's right. Yeah, there's over 10,000 graves in Normandy. So I've seen a photo you took flying over those graves. Uh, it's very dramatic. humbling. You know, the yeah, hair on your arm yeah, stands. Just, it was uh, a very meaningful assignment. There's some assignments that are cool, and then there's some assignments that are very emotional, and the tributes over Normandy is one of them. We'll see a couple more of your Normandy shots. Here's a Milky Way shot. Probably the planet uh, Mars or, right. uh, is there, I would guess, at the yeah. last Mars opposition. And that's here at the Space Center at the refuge just north. That's like the bio lab? Yeah. Is it really up in there? At the a, bio little, lab? a little more north, north of there. A little more, yeah, okay. Yeah, Beacon 42, actually. All right, we'll check that out. Mm-hmm. There's a shot of you, I know, sitting in the back seat of something. An L-39 jet, uh, just doing more aerial photography with other jets and... That's us just having fun burning off some of the fuel we had left over. Is there a strobe on there, a flash to light you nope. up, or is that uh, natural light? Just natural light. Oh. That's actually a screen grab out Marty, of the GoPro. Marty, I'm grabbing the barf bag, okay? Jeez, you know, this guy's crazy. A loop to loops area. little crazy, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it's, it, though. It's fun. you got to enjoy what you and, do. And, you know, we put a lot of his aviation photography in here, here at the Space Museum, but most of all the great uh, astronauts, would love to fly these that are pilots. Well, a lot of them were test pilots, so I always considered aviation and space flight very similar. I mean, I never understood how you could love one and not the other. But There's a another uh, Delta launch uh, all covered up in smoke. Yeah, that was That's the, a pretty unique shot there with the sun shooting into the sun and getting some nice yeah. cloud formations off the, the uh, solid rocket boosters. Uh, Mars atmosphere. Oh, this is Maven. Maven. That's in the clean room, just as just before they tucked it away to launch. Now, is this here at uh, Astrotech? It is. Okay. Or actually, that was in the clean room on Kennedy Space Center. Okay. 
I can't remember what they call I've it. I've got but. a question. You're all bundled up there, Mike. And, yeah. And again, Mike is uh, the former managing editor. Sorry that we got the the super wrong there. That doesn't upset his uh, no. the Air America Space Happy people. Happy to promote America Space. Uh, he's going to be a freelancer, frees him up to do stuff. Yeah. But I've always got this question. You're all bundled up and everything, and yet you got your camera in your hand. That's right. Did they? Uh, the camera's got germs on it yeah did they clean you have to clean your camera before you go in the clean room yeah yeah you can clean it all you want but nasa or whatever engineers are in there at the time they're going to clean it themselves anyway oh so, so you hand your camera so yeah. they're going to wipe it down all right i always yeah. wondered about that they always do a double Cause check because you could put it in a plastic bag with mm -hmm. a shoot your lens out a hole or something but. you could but they they dust it down and they use um they blow a lot of air on them and they that they clean it themselves, better. and then they give it back to you, and you can get to work. Yeah, because I know how dirty them cameras can get. About a couple times a year, I'll just yeah. sit and watch Jeopardy yeah. with my camera and uh, some toilet paper or Kleenex that doesn't have uh, any kind of yeah. lotion on it, and isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. That's, that's what they I, do. That's how I clean mm -hmm. my camera. They're not going to take your word for it with a billion-dollar spacecraft. All right, so. good, good. Yippee! We're celebrating. What are we celebrating there? So that's Mike? that's Atlantis, which is on display at the Kennedy Space Center and Visitor Complex, and that's the night that NASA basically handed it over. That's wow. arriving <clears throat> to its final destination at its new display, and they did a nice fireworks show to celebrate it. So that's talk what about that is. goosebumps and getting the hair to rise on your arm. If you've not been to the Kennedy Visitors Complex, yeah. when you go and see the Atlantis building and how they reveal that is quite emotional and stirring really. it's very impressive yeah yes it, it's uh, uh when you go see it and then they, they actually open up a wall and there it is and, it's uh, very impressive uh, yes you're you're blown away but i've not seen a picture like this in a while mike killian tell us what's going on here i know that's ov 105 yeah so that is um endeavor being delivered from lax to oh my god there's the hollywood sign yeah. in the upper right up there marty you see above that palm yeah. tree the the hollywood sign wow you did uh so that's crenshaw which is uh like south central la um which is pretty notorious for some bad reasons but okay um it took them three days to move shuttle endeavor through the city huh. to the california uh, science center and there you see it in the street there you see the yeah. aft end of it the engines there and they moved so slow and i believe there was a million people that came out not one single report of crime or anything. And yeah, would they have a million a, people came out just to support it and to yeah. see it? Because the public never got to be that close to a space shuttle. That's it was cool. an incredible three days. It was, I don't think I slept at but, night. What was it like at? Did they put like triple police tape around it and stuff like that at night, or were they kept moving it? At night? They always had. It was always guarded with um, LAPD. Helped uh -huh. out a lot. Um, yeah. But no, night or day, they would keep it moving. They just want to get it hmm. in indoors as soon as possible. Right. Yeah. It's most yeah. vulnerable to weather. Yeah. Of course, is what they had to cut about. down um, power lines and trees and just all kinds of stuff just to let that thing fit through the streets. It was very impressive, and you'll never see it again. I don't know why a couple of these are being repeated. Could have threw some extras in there. There you are Maybe. with the shuttle on a 747. That's Discovery getting ready to head to the Smithsonian. That was its last day at Kennedy Space wow. Center. And, of course, uh, you've been to Johnson Space Center, I imagine, yeah. out there in Houston. And they have uh, one of the 747s uh, and uh, a mock-up on it out mm -hmm. there. That might be the same 747. I'm not sure. Yeah. But they, they have and, one. And on the 747 that I liked seeing it at Houston was... Uh, They've got the uh, the crew on 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 the side there below yeah. the the windows. They've got the people that that flew it there and with pride. So. Yeah, just like with uh, military aircraft, they have um, the pilot, co-pilot, and the yeah, and they put what little um, drawings or whatever. I'm not sure what they're called, but for all the missions that yeah, they flew, icons, well, this, so. they have the same thing on the NASA 747. Every mission that it flew with the space shuttle is painted by the doorway, right? Which is really cool. Yeah. Gorgeous photograph here that is not a, uh, is that a one-shot frame That's just there? a one-frame, 400 millimeter. He did not superimpose the moon on there in, no. in Photoshop. Uh, I'm always looking up when I, you know, aviation geeks, we hear an engine, we look up. Yeah. That's 
just happened to be by the moon. I thought it would be a cool shot. And the moon doesn't look like a flashlight in the sky. I saw some pictures today, someone claiming fabulous pictures of the moon rise over Artemis One, And it, 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 there's no density in the Maria or the craters there. Correct. It just looked like a big old flashlight. Yeah. It was just a great time of day. It was twilight. So there's another. Now, you're a storm chaser. Speak to that a little bit. I like to storm Make chase. Make a buck or two chasing storms. Make a buck or two, license it to the news. Or you see the storm footage in the news all the time. Where do you think it comes from? Yeah. It's photojournalists Have in the field. Have you been on the Weather Channel? Yeah, the uh, rocket launch with the fighter jet recently was on the Weather Channel, actually. Okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, I chase because I love to do it. I, I love nature. It's humbling. It's impressive. And you can make a few dollars. And you can help people along the way that will need it because there will be people that need help. Now, there's a beautiful streak shot. Tell us, but there's a lot more going on there than meets the eye. T yeah. Tell us about this, Mike Killian. That is Elon's Falcon Heavy launching at night. Wow. So you see the streak arcing over the ocean. That's the launch. And then the two streaks from top to bottom are both side boosters landing at the same time. Yep. That's just the long exposure of it. The reflection of the side boosters, right, coming down at the final in the, in the uh, water there. That's uh, Where were you staged at? Is that the Indian River? Uh, that's on South Merritt Island somewhere. Uh, okay. It was just a boat ramp with the right angle. It could be Sykes Creek or something like Something that. like that. Um, I love water reflections. I love night launches because as a photographer, you can be so much more creative. How do you decide where you want to go on a launch? What's the process of that? I look at what direction the launch is going, number one. Uh -huh. And then I'll either scope the area out myself the day prior or a day or two prior, or maybe I'm already familiar with the area. Mm -hmm. Or I'll look on a map on your phone, which are pretty accurate, and you can find little bodies of water, little trails, and things like that. You just There's a lot of homework, but it pays off. Sure does. Yeah. There's a Normandy shot, isn't it? Yeah, that's... Um, oh, that's what I alluded to. So that plane there is named That's All Brother, and it was one of the lead planes in the invasion of Normandy. They dropped... The actual plane. Correct. 75... There was ago. 900 of those that dropped paratroopers wow. over Normandy behind enemy lines to take over the bridges and basically soften up the enemy before the famous beach landings happened. So there was over 15,000 paratroopers that jumped out of 900 of those wow. to even make the beach assault happen. Huh. And that was returning for the 75th anniversary. That plane is still flying, and it's taken care of. So I do a lot of work with those kind of museums. And, and that's one of the cemeteries over there, correct? That's, that's flying over there. That's just half of the American cemetery in Normandy. There's 10,000 graves there. I mean, some Freedom of you is not free. have been there. God bless you, and thank you for your, your service. It's very much very so. few left alive uh, from yeah. D-Day, uh, and just such amazing to see things about that, the, the gliders yeah. and the, the British gliders mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff yeah. that was going on. Uh, and uh, Well, there he is upside down again. But that's not me. That's a Oh, that's not you? Oh, see, I, I like to have gonna, fun and do some cool stuff, but I would not do too. that. Gee, you're not yeah. a wing walker, Mike? What's wrong no, with you? No, I'm not too interested in that. <laughs> that's my friend Ashley Shelton. She's a, a wing walker. wing walker. She's a wing walker and a pilot herself. And oh, my God. I can't believe wing walkers. The guy flying the plane is her husband. His name is Greg Shelton, and they're good friends of mine on the air show circuit. And that's just uh, some of the fun that we have. I get to work with these people quite often, and I love flying. And when you see something like that, like I said, I wouldn't do that. But I'd be happy to well, capture the photos of you doing it. <laughs> Well, and when you're up doing something like that as a photographer, he's going, wow, look at this sweet light. Look at the beautiful of course. light you got there. To, of course. To, to, and, and, of course, uh, uh, you're instructing the pilot and everyone where yes. to be to, to get, get better light and stuff like yes. that. But, yeah, I love watching those old, I don't know, were they in the 40s and 50s, the wing walkers or 30s, mm -hmm. were kind of a real attraction at county fairs and stuff yeah. like that. and. And you never see a good old wing walker at the, the aviation shows anymore. You do at some. So that's yeah. Ashley Shelton, and they, they do that at air shows around the country. And we're getting close to the end here. Great conversation with uh, aviation and space photographer Mike Kellyan. 
there's another triple barrel shot. There yep. Quite, quite a few of those in there today. Falcon but, Heavy again. Space. Oh, that's the Falcon Heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's SpaceX Falcon Heavy launching yeah. off Kennedy Pad 39A, which is the former space shuttle pad. Apollo, SpaceX leases it now from NASA. And that's got Starman and the Roadster in the, in the, the, yep. the top up there. Uh, uh, well, we got Sharon McDougal, Sharon Caples McDougal. Thank you for watching. Sharon, uh, we had her on if you saw Mike. She's the space tech from Houston that we had on last month. Very uh, cool. Yeah, she's, she, she is very Hi, Sharon. cool. Thank you for watching Stay Curious, Sharon. We had our second year anniversary yesterday. And Professor Key Soul, glad that you're watching on Stay Curious today. And uh, a couple more there. Is you in action there? Is that uh, where were you located there at the mountains? Is that out at Edwards? Or? That's Nellis Air Force Base. Nellis, okay. Yeah. And one of the Air Force guys, I was just out. That's two of our most recent stealth fighters. Wow. Um, I was just out there doing a sunrise shoot, and one of the Air Force guys sent me that photo, and I just figured I'd show. To think that those used to be like top secret vehicles yeah. too, right? For for decade or more. At least development wise, for sure. I mean, you can't see those things on radar. But I've flown photo shoots with them where we would ask them like, uh, "Where are we looking for you?" And they would say, "Oh, don't worry, we'll we'll find you." Oh, really? Yeah, it's so and cool. And all of a sudden they roar by. And, and then all of a sudden they're off your wing, and you never saw them coming. You can you look at the radar, and you just don't see anything. Huh. It makes you feel good, like there's a little security, the peace of mind when you know we have stuff like that. Good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> protecting our country. Yeah, uh, there's uh, again World War II. That's again France for um, paying tribute to D-Day. What are those airplanes? What are you in, and what are we looking out of? I'm in a Beach 18, which was a World War II plane. Uh huh. And those three planes flying alongside are more of the. Um, Sky trains, which you saw over the cemetery. Great. Yeah, That's yeah. just some of them together. And they're all D-Day planes. They all flew the invasion, and they're still flying to this day. Now, I know you are very happy to get this shot, and we featured a, another version of it on our green screen a month ago. Tell us about this shot. That is a F-86 fighter jet, Korean era. It was recently restored by a friend of mine named Doug Matthews. Took many years to restore it. Mm-hmm. And that is an Atlas V rocket launch in the background, launching the GOES T weather satellite for NOAA. That was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But this is an example of a day where everything worked perfectly. The weather was great. The rocket had no technical issues. The plane had no technical issues. The lighting was good because it was behind us, which is what you prefer. Mm -hmm. So everything worked and. And you I had was able clearance to, to be in an airspace where a rocket's going. <clears throat> at. That's well, we were on the very edge of the restricted airspace, so we didn't need any clearance. Okay. We just flew the edge of it, and so I would say we are 12 miles away in that photo, mm -hmm. 11,000 feet. But to combine the passion for aviation and space flight into one image has been a goal for a long time, and we finally pulled it off. Here's another one of them aircraft over Normandy yep. on the Atlantic Ocean there. We've got a couple more photo, pretty photos here. How about this jaw-dropping photography here? Some eye candy from Thank you, Mike Mark. Killian here. We enjoy bringing our photographers to inspire you to stay curious. Maybe you're, you're a photographer and you're welcome to get in touch with me or uh, Mike. Uh, yeah. You Google Mike uh, Killian, you'll find how to get yeah. a hold of him on Facebook. You find me on social media. And, uh, I'm happy to talk uh, to you. Marty, you got a, a comment, a question? Comment. A lot of good comments, but uh, Carlton Bailey really hit it. Mike is a kind of photojournalist. Consider old school. I consider old school. Will talk to you and not act like he's better than you. Looking ahead of stuff, I can always learn. Too many newbies keep things to themselves. At least that's my experience with him. Thank you, Carlton. Likewise to you, too. Yeah, I, there's no reason to be greedy. Uh, I would never get to do half of this stuff if it wasn't for people who helped me and supported me along the way. And you have to pay it forward is how I see it. So I'm happy to help anybody. I'm not threatened by anybody. I will support anybody who is chasing their passions and dreams no matter what it is. Appreciate those comments, yeah. Carlton. Thank he you. He was saying uh, that the to re rephrase what Marty said there that Carlton was saying is that, you know, uh, you're one of the good guys. Thank the, you. The, uh, 
I've been in press pools a long time and stuff. Some people are very secretive about how they got the shot. Yeah. When, when, particularly in astrophotography before the digital era, you know, a lot of people were doing some creative things that, that you know, maybe you didn't want people to know how to do it. But, yeah. But uh, uh, then again, uh, uh, people that are forthright to help you, uh, quite frankly, it's taken me four years to get the, the, the streak shot right there, okay? That, that we're doing here with an abandoned boat, uh, getting launched yeah. off of there. That was a hurricane that washed that ashore. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Hurricane Irma? I can't exactly. remember, but that's right here in Titusville off Highway 1. It just a hurricane blew it on shore, and I figured it'd be a cool shot. Yeah, to be, be uh, the friendly guy that's willing to share and help people out and share equipment or things to the last minute, that's the kind of guy that... That Mike Killian is, that uh, Thank you. Carlton Bailey is also himself. Yes, There's he is. A, uh, as well as Mark and Tommy Syag. There's a lot of good guys out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, I was thinking of uh, the Brit the Brit that's been out there for a long time. There's a lot of them. Uh, not Justin. Uh, Julian. Julian. Julian, yeah, Julian Leak. Leak. Yeah, Julian, Julian Leak's a good friend of mine, and he's just like Carlton and Mark and Tom. Yeah. We'll he, have he to will, get Julian on here one day. You, you do, and he's he he's actually, been there for so long, yeah. Apollo, all of that. I have to try to get him on next month because he rode, I think, the gantry on Apollo 16. He's done, yeah. The pad he's done amazing pictures. things yeah, out there. Talk about Julian Leake out there. Yeah. Tell him to stay curious with us. Of course, everyone's got to get one of those spent boosters out yeah. there to, uh, while you're eating a meal at the Port Canaveral. That's, that's a nice one. There. That's the first reused SpaceX booster coming back in. And Gwen Shotwell, who is one of the leaders of SpaceX, she has that print actually oh does she which, yeah gwen shotwell is yeah. uh yep she, marty another question yeah larry pushkar what is in your photo kit larry pushkar asks what is what what is in your photo kit what's in your so photo kit? um good question larry for remote cameras i use uh several different cameras all canon dslrs um canon 6d is my favorite it's very affordable it also has a full frame professional sensor in it. So you can shoot daytime, nighttime, it doesn't matter. You're going to get good results. Um, I use Canon Mark II for remotes. I use a Canon 40D for remotes. For flying, I use GoPros. I use my cell phone even. These cell phones can shoot 4K video at 60 frames a second now. Are you kidding me? I will yeah. mount the phone to the top of my camera when I'm flying. Where the flash goes, I would just put the cell phone up there, rolling 4K video, and it's just recording. And whatever oh. I'm shooting photos of, the phone is recording in 4K. Wow. So I use several cameras, but that's normally how it works. There is another gorgeous, one of the, one of the more beautiful. I mean, that is awesome. There's your, that's your hometown. My hometown. San Francisco Bridge there, right? Yep. Sunset over the Golden Gate. That's my friend. Uh, he's a world-renowned aerobatics pilot. I was going to say, he's not on fire and looking no. uh, for a May Day call there. He's got this uh, uh, smoke to show yeah. his loop-de-loops and all He's that. an aerobatic pilot named Sean Tucker, and he's about six feet from my face. Wow. Yeah. What, what a nice light that is. Uh, the, I love the ripple on the, the, the bay there, too. Adds adds to the whole effect there. It's a beautiful place from the air. Now my knees are rattling already looking at you up there, but you're up there at the White Room of Triple T's office. Very near, very near to it. That was the last shuttle on the pad for the last time. That's Atlantis STS-135, and huh. NASA gave us some pretty unprecedented access. And to this day, even with the flying or anything else that I've done, I consider those days as I don't... Your favorite. I flew into a solar eclipse. I plan to do it again, and I still feel like nothing can top wow. what we got to do back then at the end of the shuttle. That was a dream come true for me to cover the shuttle program as a photojournalist. Uh huh. And for NASA to offer those opportunities, as well as the publishers that I worked with, I just had to pinch myself. Well, here's one of your great photos, in my opinion. Marty, do you see the person on the floor? Is that you, Marty, down on the. In the VAB yeah, on would the be bottom cool. there, you see the little ant down there on the bottom. That's a great shot where Mike is showing you the scale yeah. of, of America's great reusable spaceship. Uh, a spaceship that John Blaha, the astronaut, said to a group of people at Kennedy Visitors Complex, we'll never see the likes of again. 
yeah. in maybe 100 years. And that's what made it more special covering the end of the shuttle era. As you know, there's never going to be anything like it. And that shot was from, I believe, 16, level 16 maybe. Wow. I, I, it was a long time ago, but we were really high up. That's how big the stack was. There's another little lightning out over the, uh, over oh, the space that's, shuttle. That's the, uh, uh, you're at the press site. That's there. the NASA press site that you see on TV and movies, and that's the space shuttle launch pad off in the distance and a lightning storm delaying the launch, which is a normal thing in the summertime. And here is the, la the launch that we have and that's here the for launch. the last picture. That's, that's the launch the next day. Was that uh, which uh, orbiter was that? What You said that was 134? Endeavor 134. Okay, it says 134. That was STS 134. Yep. The next to the last fo uh, shot, a uh, uh, shuttle launch. This was that big uh, science experiment there. The, yeah. The 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 uh, patches, electronic things. I forget the big. Uh, I had a lot of magnetosphere something. That yeah. They put out. I had a lot of remote cameras fail as I was learning how to operate them. So that's a remote camera of the shuttle launch, and it's the only remote camera of a space shuttle launch that I ever captured. Oh, really? I tried remotes for, I believe, three missions prior to that, and something always went wrong. Wow. So when you see those photos, it's a lot of effort and work to actually get those results, and half the time they don't work for a hundred different reasons. Humidity. Humidity. Connections. Yeah. Just, just stupid stuff. An animal could not go I've had birds there. come and sit on the camera. Yeah. And crap all over the lens. Oh, my gosh. And then when I look at the photo, I'm like, yes, I got it. And there's a, you know, crap that's as big as a rocket itself, and then you can't use it. So, Good colors here. Look at the gray sky, the little blue poking through. You got that peachiness of yeah. the SRBs. It was a beautiful uh, day. And a lot of that is steam, folks, right? That's yes. not clouds. That's steam coming from the fire, the SRBs and the SSMEs. Uh, from the sound suppression system. Yep. The, steam is from his, the steam is from the shuttle. Yeah. Yeah. The SRB. Yeah. So, so uh, Mike Killian, that's a little bit of a beautiful potpourri of some of your great work. There. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, coming on our show and, and sharing that with our Stay Curious listeners. I know they enjoy not just your artwork, but what goes in behind it is what I like to emphasize a lot. This, Thank you, Mark. This, these pictures... Uh, the picture itself has, is worth a thousand words, but then you got at least 200 words about how that photographer got there to take them pictures. But Marty's got a question. Cynthia Rossi, what are you looking forward to photographing that you haven't done yet? Talk to us, go. What are you looking forward to photographing from a Mr. Rossi or Miss Rossi? Cynthia. Cynthia Rossi. Hi, Cynthia. I know Cynthia online. So. All right. And glad everybody's enjoyed this conversation with Mike and he's got so many questions. I want to do scuba diving with sharks and whales and World War II plane wrecks around the world. Scuba I've, diving to see World War plane wrecks. Yeah, okay. and wildlife like sharks, uh, whales, dolphins, just underwater photography. I just recently got my scuba diving certification so I can actually start doing that. All right. And, of course, I want to go to space one day, so we'll see what happens with that. You would be, yeah, yeah I, I can see you strapping in right away. So I got oh, yeah. a question. Uh, the wrecks, I think, of the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to ask you, have you ever photographed a UFO? Not yet. You would know if I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I sure hope so because I there's something happening out there. Well, the, I've our, never our, seen our, it. Our, our, uh, in July, the, our government did acknowledge that, yeah. that, that that the very super supersonic images that mm -hmm. they that have been done by jets and and so forth uh, are not hoax or Photoshop. Yeah, that what is shown is something that is defying the laws of physics as we know them. Yeah, on there. So uh, the U.S. Navy has admitted publicly, and you all can look this up yourself. The the military is now saying they're real. We don't know what they are. It's like a slow dissemination happening almost. I've never seen anything myself, but I've spoken to a lot of pilots who have, and apparently it's a very normal thing. Really? So if I ever do see something, you'll see the but photos on like social to media. You have. Oh yeah. And a shout out to my friend and your friend, George Fleener. Yes, sir. You know George, and uh, hi, buddy. Hi, George. He's uh, from Bristol, Tennessee, and cool. excellent uh, astrophotographer. George is over in Bradenton, Florida, 
and he's got an all sky camera 24 7 nice on his uh, uh telescope observatory out there and occasionally george will catch a fireball and uh, post it up there thank you george i knew you'd be watching your buddy uh mike killian here and uh, get your butt over here to the Space Coast, George. You haven't yeah. been over here in a long time. Uh, but uh, he's still the big, tall guy that he is, uh, looking over everybody's heads and photographing stuff in there. But uh, a, a good guy, George Fleener. And you've been a good guy, a great guy here Thank to, you, Mark. to talk uh, with us. We enjoyed a conversation with Karen Conklin, our executive director. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to say about our museum? It just blows my mind. This place is incredible. The amount of history, the artifacts that they have, the f things that have flown in space. Mark showed me a black box from the space shuttle, which I've never seen. Every time I come in here, I see stuff I've never seen, and it's not just models and displays. It's actual artifacts, history, and it's... Any aviation geek, space geek, would love this place. So if you're ever in Brevard County for a launch or even Orlando, come out here. There's a moon rocket on the launch pad right now, too, 10 minutes away. You can go see that, too. That's right. It's actually, we're 11 miles from the pad sitting yeah. right here. I looked it up on the Google distance map the other day. We're 11 miles from pad 39B. And uh, appreciate you, Mike. Mike uh, has Thank extended you, uh, his services to us to do a video uh, where we're going to do, I'm going to go through some of the gallery real quick to do a, a seven to ten minute video that we can share with other people to inspire them to come here. Yeah. Appreciate you embracing our museum like that, Mike. Thank you, Mark. So, well, we can't wait to have you back and see some of the Artemis launch photos that I know you're going to take. Yeah. And uh, he's uh, uh, agreed to let us share some of his work on our Facebook page. So, anytime. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you all for being out there. Marty, thanks for what all of you've done. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, and that is Travis Ted Todd Thompson Day, Triple T, with Tales from the White Room. So we know that you enjoy those. Yeah, I know his buddy, Renee Arians, he actually brought me on board the space shuttle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he would be a good guy to have on the show sometime, too. We'll, ask him about that. We'll have to, we'll have to ask him about yeah. that. Uh, so until we do have Triple T on the show tomorrow, I'm Mark Marquette, and we thank all of you watching us and coming to our museum to what? to bridge the space between us. Thank you.